Good evening, everyone, and happy December. I hope you've got time because tonight will be a blast from the past as we prepare for the future of Wheeler Avenue. Each year around this time, people all over the world begin to reflect upon times past as they make plans for the new year. We think about the ways that our lives have changed, our accomplishments, our challenges, our excitement, and our disappointments. As the year 2021 comes to a close and the ministries on campus prepare to resume their in-person activities, we want to go back in time for a moment. We have realized that with everything going on around here, as much as things have changed, things really have remained the same. God has blessed our church with consistent growth through the years, resulting in groundbreaking ceremonies under both Pastor Emeritus William Alexander Lawson and Dr. Marcus D. Cosby for our sanctuary and the cathedral. We've also witnessed people receive unexpected, life-changing blessings right in the middle of worship. Check this out. Doesn't go a whole long way in times like these, but I want that to get you peace away. All right, I wanted to bless your life because I want you to know that your church is interested in your future, interested in your progress, interested in your productivity, and interested in your prosperity. We're interested in that. That's mean being whole. That means having everything you need just when you need it most. All right. Now I just gave you a lesson on tithing, <laughs> so I just gave you ten five dollar bills. There's $50 in that envelope. What you gonna do? $5, $5, that's all I need you to do. God bless you, man. Trust God with the tithe. Trust God with the tithe, all right. Uh, Chris, Chris, because you trusted God with the tithe, that's 10 more, that's 10 more $5 bills. That's 50 more dollars right there, Chris. Hey, man, I like you, you a quick study. God bless you, man, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Chris! Come here, man. Because you trusted God with the tithe, that's 10 more $5 bills. You hear me? God bless you, man. I like the way you work it. God bless you, brother. Praise the Lord for you. Come on, somebody celebrate Chris. Pastor AJ, you got something else? Chris! Come here, man. Come here, buddy. That's 10 more $5 bills. I want you to be blessed. You want to be a delightful land. Look at that. Somebody else giving you something, man. That's just somebody telling you we want to be a blessing to you. I want you to prosper, man. God bless you, man. Chris! Come here, man. That's 10 more $5 bills just so we can be a blessing to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and celebrate. Oh, man, go ahead and be a blessing. God bless you, man. Here's somebody else who want to be a blessing to Chris. Chris, this is what we do in church. This is how we hook a brother up. Oh, Chris, blessings all around you. Every time you turn around, he keeps making a way for you. will call you blessed. Everybody's going to say you blessed. Whew, that still blesses me. As believers, 
we have learned to worship through life storms, metaphorically and literally, especially living in Houston, Texas. Hurricanes like Ike and Harvey, or just a regular Sunday morning downpour, had displaced us, knocked out the electricity, and caused a little bit of damage. But we never lost our praise. Check it out. God is truly doing a great work. He did it then, he's doing it now, and he will continue to do it in the years to come. And we can't say it enough around here. We are intentionally intergenerational. Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church has always been a family church with ministry opportunities for all age groups. The one that most people can identify with is the chapel choir. Here are a few nostalgic clips from decades past.
speaking of the chapel choir, don't you all miss hearing and seeing them in worship? Our next guest is Mr. Ron Johnson, director of the chapel choir. He's here to share some insight on the plans for the chapel choir as we make our way into the new year. Thank you for joining us on The Avenue. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. Great. So as you know, we're talking about Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, then versus now. Earlier in the show, we got to see some old pictures and videos of our church and how things have really evolved through the years while staying true to who we are at the core. Some of the last clips that we saw were of the chapel choir. How long have you been serving as the director? I've been the director of chapel for four years now. Wow, has it been four years? Okay, well, as the director, you know that this choir has been around since the beginning. And so many generations here at Wheeler have such sweet memories of their time singing with friends. Um, but in 2019, the last youth revival that we had, our theme, ironically, was homecoming. Mm -hmm. We blended the young with the older, and it was a fabulous time. So tell us about some of that process and what went into gathering all of those age groups. That process was a very fun process because we had an opportunity to see the evolution of, I would say, Wheeler Avenue's choir. Uh, chapel was the very first choir here at the church and to have the older members come back and to take songs that they sung when they were here to have the next generation uh, infuse some of their material in songs and then the current generation to be able to merge them in with a little hip hop flair. Uh, it was definitely a creative process. Um, but it was such a much needed process to not only show the evolution of chapel, but just the evolution of the whole worship arts ministry when it comes to choir in itself. What has that evolution been like over those four years that you've been here? The evolution, the four years that I've been over chapel, I've seen music in itself change. Uh, chapel back in the day was more of a, uh, a structured, uh, very organized, stern. Uh, choir and those same concepts still apply today, uh, but I've been a part of the process that has brought us into the 21st century per se where more of our younger members uh, are not so structured so we kind of have to be flexible with them uh, with the styles of songs that we sing, uh, the type of material that we choose, and also giving kids an opportunity uh, to sing. Most of them did not grow up singing in church compared to the original chapel choir where choir was the main focus uh, of their being. Well, what did you learn about the culture of Wheeler Avenue and Chapel Choir? I know you touched on that a little bit just now, but what, dig a little bit more deeply into what you learned about that, the culture of the Wheeler Avenue experience. The Wheeler Avenue experience is a very unique uh, and different experience to where when you take everything that the church stands for, bridging the gap, being intergenerational, you want to also make sure that you stay true to chapel in itself. Uh, so we're still going to do songs that serve and worship our God. We're still gonna do songs that touch the hearts of anybody that we're singing for, especially the young people that we're serving. So that process has been unique in itself to be able to watch them worship God from their point of view uh, and be able to adapt uh, and not just have them worship God the way I worship God and the styles of songs that we sung when I was growing up, being able to take their input infuse that into what's currently going on at the same time, give them something to worship God that's true and authentic. Speaking of that adaptation, um, since March of 2020, the Chapel Choir has been on a nice break. <laughs> um, what are some of your plans for getting things back up and running again? And how are you going to infuse what you've learned about that and, and just kind of make it fit to where children are now? Like we haven't had that structure in so long, especially in church. How are you gonna navigate that? I'm excited about it. Uh, a lot of new things that I want to take a chance with and try uh, to merge a lot of the arts into chapel. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna definitely focus on building a praise team. Uh, we've never had a youth specific praise team, but I want to be able to model our youth praise team to our current praise team to where they're able to lead out in worship, whether it's in youth church or main service. Uh, we do uh, have that component of our service where our pastor is so gracious and kind to let our youth still be a part of that service. And so we want to prepare them for praise and worship in that capacity. As we do that, we're going to merge in the choir, pull them back in and just build voices. We're going to go out there and get those kids that are normally in the audience 
pull them into the choir, and use whatever their giftings and talents are in the form of chapel. Uh, so that's that evolution that we were talking about, being able to take it. If you rap, yeah. we need you. If you do hip hop dance, we need you. If you sing, we need you. If you play, we need you because it's gonna be a huge evolution from music and arts combined that will be the new chapel going into the 21st century. And that's what I wanted to talk about because not everybody sings, but people still, believe it or not, want to be involved. Even as children, they wanna be involved in church. And some people, some students feel like there is not a place for them to serve in ministry. So like you said, if someone wants to play an instrument, they can do that if someone wants to dance. Um, you and Reverend Boone have been discussing what youth church will look like in the future. Um, what are some of those plans? Some of those plans is to definitely utilize the youth uh, in any capacity. As you mentioned, some kids may not sing. That may not be their thing. But if you rap, I want to find a place for you because we can find songs that will fit your gifting. If you do poetry, and we've done this in the past, we've infused poems into a song or a talking piece into a song. If you do hip hop dance, you can work with the choir and choreography. You can even work with our youth church coming up with different little dances that can be unique uh, for our experiences. So we definitely want to welcome anybody, whatever that talent is, we'll find a place for you. Uh, so if you're out there watching, if you have that gift and that talent, whatever it is, if you think it's too small or too big, let us use it because we'll find a place for it. So will it be limited to just youth church? Can students, and will there be an opportunity for the youth of Wheeler Avenue to participate in worship in the cathedral outside of the space that is designated for the youth? Absolutely. Over the four years that I've been a part of the Chapel family, I've had the uh, amazing opportunity to also be over Psalm of David, Young Adult Choir. And so traditionally, I like to merge the two. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are tons of opportunities for our youth not just to uh, stay locked in youth church, uh, which is a new thing that we're uh, going to start in the near future, uh, but also to merge them with other young adults so that way as they leave chapel, they'll be able to keep that pathway going uh, to either the young adult choir or uh, our dance ministry at the church in a different capacity or whatever ministry, if it's audio TV, uh, whatever that is, just finding a pathway for them to go and not to feel lost in that process. So the goal is to start them here and then watch them grow until they leave us to go to college and then get involved somewhere. Yes. What is your favorite part about working with the chapel? What has been your favorite part about working with the chapel choir? And what are you looking forward to most as we return to ministry? One of the most joyous opportunities that I've had is to watch kids that I've seen never want to sing, never want to lead a song, and they take that risk to do it. Um, and I never forget the experience we combined with uh, Psalms of David, P.O.D. for short, and we had a lead from P.O.D. and a lead from Chapel, and the kid was so nervous, he was so afraid, but just to watch how the choir behind him and the church membership rally and support uh, him, it meant so much uh, to the point where afterwards, you know, his parents were just like, he just kept singing and singing and singing, and that's the goal. I think for me, that's the joy and the benefit of why we do what we do, to be able to give them that opportunity to see what could happen. We never know what will happen uh, from that moment. So for me, that was one of the biggest experiences outside of back to school revival. Uh, but in that moment, to see a kid who is shy, nervous, scared, but have a talent, and to see the church body rally behind him, support that talent, and to watch him flourish can't have moments like that and take them for granted. Absolutely beautiful. Lastly, please give us the age range of students um, who can participate in both the chapel choir and youth church, as well as how people can get more information about chapel choir rehearsal schedules, when all of that will be taking place. Wonderful. I would suggest if you are interested in joining chapel choir and even participating in youth church, look out on the church's website. We're still finalizing those final touches to make sure that everything is perfect uh, once we get back into the cathedral and in our youth space. Uh, but for more information on chapel choir, they can reach out to me via email at rjohnson, R-J-O-H-N-S-O-N at wheelerbc. Dot org, and I can give you all the details on how you can participate in what I like to call now our youth worship arts uh, that will expand us from just choir, but actually the arts as well. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much Thank you for, having for me. talking about such an important important age group in our church. They are the future. So thank you so much for taking the time to invest in our students and talking to us about that this evening. Thank you for having me. Incredible. Once again, if you have or know any children who may be interested in joining the chapel choir, make sure that you stay connected with the youth ministry for updates. Thank you, Mr. Ron, for the information that was shared this evening. I truly enjoyed that blast from the past, and I am so excited about our future as a church family.